Hi, welcome. In the last video, we learned the definition of competitive equilibrium. In this video, we'll discuss a couple of theorems that can help us in solving for competitive equilibrium later. First one is Walder's Law. Walder's Law states that when prices are positive and utilities of the consumers are increasing, then if demand equals supply in one market, let's say market for X, then demand will also equal supply in market for Y. The proof is simple. Since utilities are increasing, consumers will spend all their income in optimum. Therefore, 1 and 2 holds. Adding 1 and 2, we get the following expression. Px into x1 plus x2 plus py into y1 plus y2 equals px times total endowment of x in the economy plus py times total endowment of y in the economy. Notice that this equality holds for all values of px and py. Now if x1 plus x2 is equal to omega 1x plus omega 2x, then we can cancel these two terms. And since py is positive, we'll get that y1 plus y2 must also equals omega 1y plus omega 2y. So that means if it turns out that one of the markets clears, then the other market will automatically clear. This is Walder's law. The next result is the following. That if price vector px star py star supports this allocation as equilibrium, and py star is positive, then dividing the price vector by py star will not change anything. The revised price vector will also support the same allocation as competitive equilibrium allocation. The proof is again simple. Since px star py star supports this allocation in competitive equilibrium, individual ones utility maximizing choice will be the solution to the following utility maximization problem. Now dividing the entire constraint by py star, we are going to get, we are going to replace this term by px star by py star. We'll replace this by 1, we'll replace this by px star by py star and we'll replace this by 1. Since the solution doesn't change, solution in this revised problem will also the same. Therefore, when the prices are px star by py star comma 1, Consumer 1 will continue to choose x1 star y1 star in optimum and same holds for individual 2. And since x1 star y1 star x2 star y2 star was market clearing in case of px star py star, x1 star y1 star x2 star y2 star continues to be market clearing in case of these revised prices. Therefore, dividing the price vector by a positive constant, in this case py star, doesn't change the equilibrium. The immediate consequence of these two results is the following procedure for solving for competitive equilibrium. So the first step in the procedure is find the demand functions. Here m1 denotes the income of individual 1 and m2 denotes the income of individual 2. px and py are prices of x and y respectively. x1d is the demand function of commodity x by individual 1. If y1d is the demand function of commodity y by individual 1 and similarly for x2d and y2d. The second step will be to take y as numerator and put py equal to 1 and we write incomes of each individual as a value of their respective endowments that is m1 equals px omega 1x plus omega 1y and m2 equals px omega 2x plus omega 2y. Now we rewrite these demand functions by substituting in place of py1 and in place of m1 and m2 the respective value of the endowments that we computed in step 2 to get x1d as just the functions of px and y1d will also be the function of px and same holds for x2d and y2d. Now we are going to take any of the two markets because we know Walder's law holds and sum the demands of the two individuals in that market and equate it to supply to solve for the price of x. So if we take for example market for x then demand for x by individual 1 is given by this expression 
and demand for x by integer 2 is given by this expression. Adding them up and equating it to the supply of x, we can now solve for price of x. If it turns out that demand is not equal to the supply at any price of x, then we just inspect at one other case where py is 0 and check if in competitive equilibrium py is 0 or not. So the procedure tells us that all that you need to do is you just need to check for two values of py, one is 0, one is 1. Because py equal to 1 will take care of any possibility where py is strictly positive because of the numerator result. And py equal to 0 must be dealt separately. So if we follow this four step approach, we'll be able to find the competitive equilibrium. In the next videos, we'll learn how to use this approach to solve for competitive equilibrium. Thank you.